Alright, welcome back to another Cools Reviews video. And tonight we hope we didn't disappoint you like we did last week. Where we could not recommend a movie for only the second time. First Blair Witch, and then that god-awful Investigating History. Mm -hmm. Today we checked out the biography, Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid, which, while watching it, I thought was mistitled. It should have just been... Biography, Butch Cassidy, featuring Sundance Kid. <laughs> As usual, I'm Keegan. Joining me tonight is... Sam. Hi, I'm Andrew. I'm Matt. Can you have me my drink, please? Well, yes, Andrew. Not sponsored. Thank you. So again, unlike our BBC ones we've watched on the Wild West, was not a whole lot of acting, but what we did get which was probably just them filming some actual cowboys running around, it was much better than what we got last week. So at least, you know, it wasn't worse. It was not worse. It was not Thank worse. It was so, more about his escapades in America than Bolivia. Yeah, and just a little future spoiler, we do have one that talks more about just Bolivia that we'll cover uh, at some point. But we wanted to do this one to tie in with our Friday episode of the Wyoming Territorial Prison. Which in this, you know, this documentary actually plays a part in Butch Cassidy's whole mindset of why he does what he does. Compared to last week's, where it was just like, yeah, he went to prison. Alright, moving on. <laughs> and it didn't make false claims about Billy the Kid and... Jesse James having a huge crowd of people around where they got shot, or that they never had stories of survival, which I thought, for a documentary on the History Channel, was ludicrous. That's pretty well known that they both did. It's pretty well known that there wasn't large crowds. So, I, I just... It was almost as baffling as that fake Megalodon documentary on the <laughs> Discovery Channel. Almost as bad. Uh, so as usual, we can't really talk about the acting, but we will talk about things we learned. So we'll start off with our giant Matt. We learned a little bit more um, than the last video, you know. Flush it out a little bit. Yeah, it was uh, pretty easy to rob a train, apparently, back in the day. There wasn't too much to stop you. <laughs> Well, okay. they kind of did, but he did it just so smartly compared to most other outlaws. Yeah, and I think that's one thing when we watch that Bolivia one, they kind of show how hard it is to actually ride a horse onto a train. Yeah. And so, this one did kind of make the train robbing seem maybe a little bit easier than it yeah. should have. Yeah, and then, uh, one of the other things too, I it, it didn't really realize how much of a nice criminal mm -hmm. Butch Cassidy was. Didn't realize he was considered one of, if not the nicest, one of the nicest criminals as well. I always thought he was some sort of badass. But he's a I mean, badass in a good way. Yeah. <laughs> he definitely didn't have the reputation that maybe a Jesse James or a Billy the Kid had. Mm -hmm. Granted, if they were, that was warranted or not, they, they obviously carried that reputation that they were pretty deadly. With Butch, it was more like he was funny... He was smart and witty, but he wasn't really quick to the gun. Yeah. Unlike some of his other members of Wild Bunch. All right, so Andrew, what did you learn this week? Um, I thought it was pretty interesting to learn uh, how he was robbing trains and stuff like that and how he got away with it um, by having really fast horses and having checkpoints to uh, change off and have a nice fresh horse every so often because he knew... Uh, when the horse had its limits. Right, because he was really well versed in horse and horse training. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, something again, the last documentary didn't really pick up on, which is a really pretty vital point in the Butch Cassidy story, is how he did his robberies. Mm -hmm. They talked about it once, but it didn't really go into depth how he knew how to do that. Yeah, how he was so su successful at it. Yeah. I thought it was interesting that he was originally going to call the gang the train robbing syndicate almost seemed kind of like pre-mafia kind of style there yeah really but organized mm -hmm. other than that the fact that he used a couple of like outlaw trails that they would 
post up in, knew where they can get feed for their horses, food for themselves, mm -hmm. and the law people didn't even dare to go. It was very fascinating. And then towards the end, it made more sense about how they could have been not killed in Bolivia because there was other cowboys down there doing the same thing at the same time. It wasn't just them, so they don't really have any proof to it, but don't have proof against it either. So I thought that was more informative than the last video. Yeah, the ending definitely played off a lot better. For one, we didn't have this weak attempt at walking out and shooting somebody while they just stood there still and missing. <laughs> um, but it really played out more at explaining how the shootout went, where while you know he was getting shot, he was pulling him back, or out of bullets. Like It really made the situation seem dire. And even it said that, yeah, they heard another gunshot. The other one said, no, they didn't hear another gunshot. So now we're having, whoa. Controversy. Controversies already. This is a JFK-level controversy. Maybe not that high, but, I mean, it is a pretty big controversy as far as did Butch Cassidy and Sundance die in Bolivia, or at least Butch. Without really knowing where any of the bodies are buried, DNA we can't do. The one person has been at least probably discredited in Oregon, so who knows? It's one of those mysteries maybe you might have to use some paranormal techniques. I want to know what happened to Sundance's wife. Yeah, yeah, agreed. At a place. It is like that one, I, like, so when I was watching, I'm like, maybe she died. Like it can't, but at the same time, they know she left. Right. But they don't know where. So what happened to her? I mean... Clearly, that wasn't her real name, no. so she could just go somewhere and live her life. But that would be an interesting thing. Could we figure out what happened at a place? Sounds like a fun adventure. Yeah, Trip. maybe one day we can go to Road Bolivia. Trip. Road trip. No, that, that's more like an air or a plane or a boat. Boat trip. Boat trip. Boat trip. Yeah. I'm on a boat. That would be a very long <laughs> drive. <laughs> um. We could do it. Chili bang bang. Hell oh, yeah, fire car. And water. Didn't matter to Chitty Chitty. Mm -mm. No. Nope. Uh, something that I learned while watching this compared to the other one was just really the vital role that the prison played in Butch Cassidy's career. Um, while he wasn't there long and it's not really well documented because they don't have the paperwork anymore. They know at least something triggered him that he went from like really upbeat and stuff to more serious and determined to get more. And so it was really vital that maybe he wouldn't have become as big as he did without the prison. And so to kind of leave that completely out of the last documentary yeah. I thought was silly. Because well, they did kind of say what could have made that happen was like the big wig. Mm -hmm. Farmers that were just that set him up, set him up, and that's what triggered him to become like the Robin Hood that like a lot of them proclaimed him to be. Yeah, I mean, there's definitely maybe a little bit more substance to the Robin Hood claim. Maybe he wasn't all the time like going out. I mean, even real Robin Hood didn't go out and rob the rich and give to the poor. Who might have been real Robin Hood just went and robbed people mm -hmm. and killed them. Mm -hmm. Kind of violent. We might have spread the will. Yeah, we should do an episode on that sometime. It's oh, a good idea. Yeah, I like it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, at least in Butch Cassidy's case, he did at least spread it around to some of the local farmers he knew. So in a way, he was giving it to the poor. All right. So anything else? Final thoughts, guys, that you want to add into this video? Yeah, some of the names of the stops that oh, yeah. the outlaws went to. <laughs> was it the Brown Hole? Brown's Brown. Hole. Brown's, Brown's, Brown's Hole. hole. Brown's Hole and the Hole in the Wall. And Brown's Hole had the Green River that looked super green in this video. Yeah, That's so brown. Too. It's uh, interesting it was called Brown's Hole, though. Some okay. of the towns, too. Oh, Telluride. I, I liked how they were like, well... Telluride. Yeah, we're not sure where it came from, but the, you know, the local urban legend or whatever you want to call it was... It was like a playoff to Telluride. Which, when you say Telluride, you're like... 
Oh, that actually would kind of make sense. Tell you I, say that's, I uh, can see why they would say to that, tell though. you ride and just talk to some locals and just be like, hey, yeah. to hell you ride. And be like, I don't, like hey, 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 hey. hey. And why not be too fond of that <laughs> <laughs> I mean, or even no. This might be spoilers for something that we've been working on. But a little spin off of it is we want to do a Butch Cassidy documentary. And so we're going to have Sam at least play Butch. So we will have to go up to tell you right at some point. We'll go back up to the museum. Do you have any, if you have not seen that video, psh, psh, click that. We do cover Butch Cassidy because they have a whole wing dedicated to him. They have some of his memorabilia. They have actual dirt from Bolivia, which I found like really interesting. That's where actually Matt might have had some paranormal equipment. You know, and maybe. Maybe. Not sure. I mean, it's pretty clear if you were watching the video. Uh, but that's where the most activity was, and I found that really interesting because it might not be Butch Cassidy, but maybe some form of another, like they're just collecting dirt, so they're collecting energy from all those different graves, and those graves might be nine, ten people deep. Yeah. And so you're thinking, they might be infecting a prison that could be haunted with even more spirits. Yeah. And maybe sometime this year... Maybe we can actually do an investigation there. During the summer, though, because it was it's cold in the prison during the winter. You learn that one if, for a fact. So, that, I think, brings us to recommendations and ratings. We'll start with Matt. And first, better or worse than last week? Two. Better. Better, 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 better. Better. I would have to agree. Uh, ratings... And I, it's still, like I said, was a little on the cheesy side. Yeah, it's definitely an older documentary. Yeah. We um, haven't found that BBC quality like we have a Billy yeah. or... Maybe know. we need to go straight to the BBC. Call yeah. them up, be like, hey, Why didn't you make a Wild West episode yeah. on Butch Cassidy? Come or on, Jesse guys. James, the other guys. Right. behind. What if they tried? Yeah, the government was like, they're too good, shut up. Shut them down! Shut them down! You can only do three. Or Nat Geo was like, we can't let them win. We can't let the British win. Well, Nat Geo actually has a pretty good Billy one we'll watch at some point. Yeah. That's why, though. They want to be the best. They might be. That might be. Yeah. That's a good one. Um, as far as rating goes, though, I'm at a six and a half, seven. Kind of like it's getting there. It was good. It had information. Um, I would recommend it. It's uh, over last week's episode for sure. Um, but yeah, definitely worth the time to check out. Mm -hmm. Andrew? I'd give it a seven. A seven? Right. Yeah, I, I mean, I didn't fall asleep. There you go. I was starting to at the end there. Yeah. So I, I got to drop the score a little bit. Still starting to fall asleep, but I actually tried really hard to stay awake because I was still... Kind of interesting. Intrigued by it. Yeah. I'll give it an eight. All right. Um, I can't say that the other one wouldn't have been a higher rating because there's too many distractions during it. But I mean, going off ours, that it wasn't very high. I mean, true, but they perceive things a lot differently. So I can't can't say the other one was completely terrible, but I can say that it was hard to watch and like probably gave it an improper rating but this one was definitely an eight because they outsourced and it was definitely really good a lot more information than what i got from the other one so it was definitely recommendable for sure are those in between details like that? Mm -hmm. yeah they flush it out it's like the difference between watching the theatrical cut of batman vs superman watching the ultimate cut and you're like, okay, it's the same story, but why did you cut that part out? Why did you cut that part or out? Or like the Lord of the Rings with the special edition and the regular yeah. one. Where it's just like scenes like, you cut that out for time, but you actually made it worse. You should have just gone for the time. Yeah. If it's good, we will sit through yeah, we it. We will sit Oh, yeah, absolutely. Well, a lot of companies are realizing that. that, and that's why you're seeing a lot of these movies now hit that almost four-hour mark now. Yeah. Because they realize people will sit and watch if it's entertaining. Well, plus they know that people now, I mean, yeah, you see a lot of people like, oh, why is Zack Snyder's Justice League four hours? And I'm just like, you just 
binge watched eight episodes of a whole season of, you know, that's more than four hours. Would you complain? Yeah. Yeah, take your time, watch it over a couple hey, days. You don't have do to see credits every yeah, Do you watch hour. the Super Bowl? That's, that's four hours. Is it? Yeah. Hmm. It's a halftime show. If you're a fan of WrestleMania, that's pushing seven hours yeah, it's to two the point now where it's two nights. Yeah, I mean, so, I don't know. I mean, clearly, if it's good, people will watch, watch. it. <laughs> Speaking of WWE, <laughs> I feel like Andre the Giant right here, and Andrew's like Bobby the Brain Heenan next to me, and I just feel like, you know, shaking him. I feel so big. I mean, jeez. <laughs> Hey, why, why don't you kind of squat a little bit for the rest of us or well, something? My knees will then go out. My knees will go out. Knees will go out. Be like, yeah. <laughs> Me and Sam are the fashion police. We are on the call. All right, we got to wrap this up because we have gone off the rails. Uh, so I'm going to give it, I don't know, I'd say about a six and a half. It's definitely, it's really good as far as the quality of information it gives, and it does flush out a lot of the issues with the other one. But then, you know, in the back of my mind, I keep thinking about those BBC ones we watched, or even the Nat Geo one. I'm just like, you could just do it a little bit better. And I, granted, it's the time, so I didn't drop it too low, because pretty much documentaries back in the day were like that. But I would recommend it, and it is definitely better than last week's. 100%. Mm -hmm. All right, so if you want to check out more Cool's reviews and hopefully learn about more good documentaries or videos you should watch, Click that link above, Matt. Now, if you want to see more of what we do here at Cools Paranormal, including our trip up to the Wyoming Territorial Prison State Historical Site, click that link in front of me. And don't forget to hit that like and give us a subscribe. subscribe. And switch that notification bell from personalized to all if you want to be notified on all of our videos. And let us know. Was Butch Cassidy a Robin Hood type? And if there's something else you want to see, let us... Let us know in the comments. Yeah, we pretty much do anything historical, paranormal, you name it. Anything out there. Anything.